So here we're going to take a look at part B of problem number one from 2013 AB. And this was also on the BC exam. So this question overlapped. It was on both uh, AB and BC versions of the AP exam in 2013. But uh, in part B here, we are asked to find the total amount of unprocessed gravel that arrives at the plant during the hours of operation of the workday. Now this is the rate at which gravel arrives. We're given that, and what I have on my calculator here already is I have that function graphed. I had to adjust my viewing windows back in part A, or my viewing window back in part A. Uh, so if you just try to graph this, you won't see this picture right away. But if you develop this picture on your calculator screen, I'll, I'll tell you a way that you can estimate uh, how much gravel arrives at the processing plant. So a way to estimate how much gravel arrives at the processing plant, you know, let's say that at t equals one, we go to this point right here on our graph. Um, I have my y-axis scaled by 50s here, so this would be 50, 100, 150 right at the top, so maybe that's like 130, 135, something like that. We can say that over the course of the first hour, gravel is arriving at about 135 tons per hour, and it's arriving at that rate for about an hour. This estimate for how much gravel arrives over the course of the first hour is essentially the area of this rectangle that I'm attempting to draw into the graph right here. Uh, if we wanted to do this for not just the first hour, but the entire workday, we'd want to estimate how much the rate at which gravel is arriving over the course of the second hour. So we could find that y value, and uh, we could estimate that to maybe be, it seems like it's practically the same exact y value. We could say that it's, you know, 135 times, whoops, that's the wrong width for that rectangle. That rectangle would have a width of 1. And so basically what I'm constructing here is I'm constructing a Riemann sum. Uh, the Riemann sum that I'm drawing, it's supposed to be a, a right endpoint sum, right? So you could estimate the rate, the amount of gravel that arrives within each individual hour by doing a Riemann sum. We don't want to rely on an estimate. We want to use what we know about integrals. We know that we first developed the idea of a definite integral by doing a Riemann sum. And since then, what we've said is if we integrate a rate of change, as this is, it's a rate of change. If we integrate a rate of change, what we end up with unit-wise, if you think about the units of g of t, this is measured in tons per hour. This dt, this differential, has the same units as t, and t is measured in hours. So if we have something measured in tons per hour times something measured in hours, those cancel, our result is gonna be measured in tons, and if we put the appropriate limits of integration here, integrating this rate of change, the rate at which gravel arrives at the plant, across the appropriate limits of integration is gonna give you how much gravel has actually arrived at the plant from t equals zero to t equals eight. And this is definitely a calculator problem, and you can rely on the calculator's capability to evaluate this for you. So I've already got this function graphed that I want to integrate, and if I go into the calculate menu, the seventh option in the calculate menu will let you do a definite integral. We want to do this definite integral from zero up to eight. And if we go ahead and copy this answer down, we get an answer that's approximately uh, 825 and we want to take this to three digits of accuracy, so that would be 0.551. And rounding or truncating is going to leave us with that 0.551 value. So why is it so hard for me to write a 5 right now? 551. Uh, this would be measured in tons, like we said a few minutes ago. That's how many tons of gravel arrive at the processing plant over the course of the workday. Uh, if you have any issues with doing the integral from the graph screen, my guess is it's probably because you don't have the limits of integration contained in your viewing window. Let's say I just had the limits of integration, or the, the viewing window being zero to six. If I go back and I try to do the integral with a smaller window from zero to eight, I'm gonna get error and uh, most likely adjust your window settings. These limits have to be contained within your window uh, that you see on the calculator in order for it to successfully do the integral from the graph screen. You could also do this from the home screen, which uh, if you look around a little bit, it's, it's found in the math menu. I'm sure you could find a video where I have or someone else has done that.